to God in Christ Missions Department. He is the prelate of the South African First Jurisdiction, the pastor of Tabernacle Church of God in Christ in Ivory Park, Johannesburg. He is known as a powerful preacher and propagator of God's word. He's married 23 years to his lovely wife, Sharon, and has 11 children. Praise God. Has a burning desire to see souls saved. Amen. He helps to plant churches all over this world. What a responsibility. Amen. God has equipped him for that. He is one who manifests miracle signs and wonders through his ministry. Amen. I want us to pull on his anointing on today. Let's be praying for him. I want everybody to point at it right now. Say, God bless Bishop Vincent Matthews. Please take your feet at this time and receive ye him. Amen. Let's give God some praise.
thank God for you. I love you, Mom. And thank God for you. And thank God for all of you. And I'm so grateful to be here. I'm in trouble with my family. Um, I just got to say that for full disclosure. I got a problem with my wife and my children right now. I'm standing here in problems in my uh, marriage. So pray for me because they're mad because they want to be here. <laughs> they're like, how you want to be in without us? And I just shot over here. My boys looking for their boys, their friends. Blake and Carrington, they told me to tell you hello. But um, I, I, and I'm at 50, well, about 42% effectiveness without my wife around. But I love my wife, and she sends her greetings to you, and she sends her love to you. I'm so grateful, though, two of my sons are here. My son is on his way back to school at Michigan State. He only has three semesters left. Oh, three semesters left. I got a new suit I'm not wearing to that graduation. Yeah, I'm real, I'm serious. I'm wearing that new suit at this graduation. So I'm glad they're here and then they're gonna leave service and go back to school. My son, Jelani, my son, Omari, and I thank God for them. Thank God for you. And I looked up and I saw Pastor Keelan Ford, who is the missions president of, um, of his jurisdiction. I'm trying to think of the name of your jurisdiction. Southwest Fifth. Southwest Fifth jurisdiction and great man of God from Flint. And I'm so honored that he's here. Yeah, he's my younger brother, so I'm glad he's here. Yeah. What an honor to be here on the first Sunday of 2018. Uh -huh. Isn't that great? First Sunday of 2018. Uh, I remember when uh, I was happy to make it to 1998, hoping to make it to 99. <laughs> you remember that? Okay, so I was looking like, you from the 1900s? Yeah. <laughs> From the 19, well, not really 1900s, but yeah, I guess it is. But um, God is good. The first Sunday, and you chose to be here on Sunday morning. Yeah. You chose to be in church on this morning. I believe God is going to do something through this revival. Oh, yeah. Now, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I should fight Pastor Chris or not, but he always invites me same time of year. Last year I was here, there was playoffs starting, and there was the college championship on Monday. I was here. There was a woman sitting right in this section that had on an Alabama shirt. Where's she at? Yeah, you get another chance this year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she had an Alabama shirt sitting in this section. Now, I'm just here to tell you, last year we were in revival the same night of the college championship. We got out of church and got back to see the best part of the game. So don't let the devil trick you to miss Jesus watching football. Come on I just want—I just want to say that right now while you're listening. All right, don't let the devil trick you. Miss Jesus, watch football. The Lions—I got news for you. The Lions did not make the playoffs this year. So whoever played today is not the home team. So we'll be back tonight, and uh, whatever God says, we're gonna get out of here. All right. So <laughs> just thought I'd say that. I'm talking to men and women, children, boys and girls. I, there is a, there's a unique set of challenges that we face on this upcoming year. Yeah. I face it with optimism, but I face it with cautious optimism. Um, there, I, 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 well, I have full optimism, it's cautious optimism, because the attack against the, the people of God and the world is on a heightened level. It, it doesn't take anybody brilliant to look and see that we're under attack. And that we're facing some challenges. And that's what we're going to do over the next, these next four services. Build a foundation on today. And then we're going to, actually it's a series of, of messages that I believe God has given us to propel us into this new year. And to walk with what Minister Water said with victory. And what does victory look like? Victory doesn't just look like I win. Victory is we win. And we win when God is glorified. When God is glorified. So I don't know what kind of car you're going to be driving by the end of the year. I don't know what kind of house you're going to be living in. But I know if God is glorified in your life, then everything else is going to fall into place. Yeah. Scripture says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. But I want to deal with um, something this morning. There is a demonic spirit that seeks to cause us to believe that we're not worthy Come of God's call in our Come lives. Yes, sir. We're not worthy to be, and so there's a subconscious, we don't consciously say it, 
that, you know, I'm not, go ahead and put the slides, by the way, that we're not conscious to say that we're, uh, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, but we, it, it, it demonstrates itself in our actions. There's many of us that should be walking in ministry. Come on. Powerfully in ministry, but yeah. we don't feel worthy enough to do the things of God. We step back, and it masquerades itself as humility. Mm. Well, I don't need a position. Well, I don't want to be up front. I'm just behind the scenes. But God needs great people to be up front Come on. and stand up and Come fill on. the void. If good men and women are silent, then the faith folks can fill that void. But God wants us to stand firm upon His promises. There are even people that. Uh, have challenges in their marriages, in their careers, in, uh, in their marriage. They don't feel worthy to be a husband, a good husband, maybe because I haven't seen good examples mm. of a good husband or a good wife or a good father, a good mother. I haven't, and there are many people who have, could have been promoted. They could have been in, in leadership at your job and in other places, but have refused it, whether uh, overtly or refused it by our actions behind the scenes to cause it to be uh, undermined because they feel like I don't want that responsibility and everybody's going to blame me when something goes wrong. And they say that because they don't feel good enough and qualified enough to stand where God wants them to be. Come on. Yes, sir. There are even people who don't even feel worthy to be alive. And so they are actually either consciously suicidal or subconsciously suicidal. There are people who are feel like they're not worthy to be alive so they're actually dealing with suicidal thoughts. And then there's others who don't have the traditional suicidal thoughts, but they're eating themselves to death, or they're drinking themselves to death, or they're popping pills to death. They're living like their life is not worth living. They're living with a reckless abandonment. They're sleeping with whoever, wherever, and just waiting to die. And I'm here to say that God's purpose is to take us from trash to treasure. Somebody say trash to treasure. There we go. All right. Trash to treasure. Now, when I look at this, how many of you here drink coffee? Anybody here drink coffee? Oh, there's a lot of coffee drinkers. All right. Yeah. They used to say two things about coffee. They told me coffee was for grown folks, so I never got the memo, so I've never started drinking coffee. Never got old enough. They also said you drink enough coffee is going to make you blacker. Now, I always wanted to be darker. Yeah. Anybody remember that? Yeah. yeah. Coffee going to get black. And I, I don't know. I, I was born without drinking coffee. I'm about as black as they get. But um, God will take you from trash to treasure. Have you ever, if you drink coffee then, I, my son, I know loves Starbucks. Uh, I don't know why. Starbucks is this cult that just rose up out of, from the 1970s and just popped out of nowhere. Have you ever heard of Kopi Luwak? You can see here, Kopi Luwak. Have you ever heard of Kopi Luwak coffee? No. Yeah. Okay, there's some who've heard of Kopi Luwak coffee. It is the most expensive coffee on the planet. You, you, you can't find better now. You, you, you think you're bougie. You probably fake bougie because if you don't know about this, you ain't really bougie. Come on. Yeah. Some folks think they're bougie. They just got leftovers. Coffee to walk is the most expensive coffee on the planet. Now, there are some expensive coffee, as you see here on the slide. There's the Kona coffee, there's the Jamaica blue coffee. Just follow me, y'all just stay with me. That's the next slide. There's the Kona coffee. Uh-uh. Back one, back one. Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Now, Kopi Luwak comes from Indonesia. It's a coffee that comes from Indonesia exclusively. It comes from nowhere else in the world but Indonesia. It is so expensive, this coffee costs, for one cup, it runs from $35 to $80 a cup. I told you it's expensive coffee. $35 to $80 a cup. And now if you just want to buy a bag, a pound of coffee beans to make your own because you want to save money, one pop, a one pound bag costs from $100 to $600 for a one pound bag of coffee. Now, by far, we can go to the next slide. By far, it's not the, it is the most expensive coffee. It comes from uh, this. Now, kopi means coffee in Indonesia, and luwak is this rat looking animal that you see there on the screen. So, kopi luwak is coffee that comes from this rat. Now, the rat is rat. Now, this is real stuff. I'm, I'm not making this up. It, you can't make nothing up like this. This rat, which is called the walk, well, they call it a cat, but it looks like a rat to me. Yeah, I grew up in Eastern Michigan. And so that rat eats the
the coffee berries. There's a coffee berry. Inside the coffee berry has a seed, which we call coffee beans. They love these berries, and they eat them. You see this, berry, this one eating it by night. If we go to the next one, after they eat the berries, oh, this is the other expensive coffees. We can skip that. I already talked about it. After they eat the berries, they defecate the seeds because they do not digest the seeds. If you don't know what defecate means, they poo the seed. As you see that on the left, that is not a candy bar. That is the defecation of the luau. Now, after 24 hours, they pull them out, so the farmers let them go in their fields, and they come out every morning and pick up the poop. This is Kopi Lua. And they go pick up the poop, and what's interesting about it is that uh, it's the most expensive because they only get about three to 500 pounds of this a year, so they have to spread it out to people who who need this great coffee. And so they go and they pick it up. After 24 hours, they, they, they separate it, they clean it off, they separate it and they pound it like coffee and that's what makes your coffee. And so this coffee, so whenever you have a cup of that, you gotta remember the little rat and remember the poo out me. <laughs> now why am I on the first Sunday morning talking about coffee and poo? Somebody just said over there. I don't think y'all gonna rush out to Amazon to buy any coffee to walk coffee. It's because how is it that coffee that is made from the feces of a rat looking animal can be so expensive? That means even in the natural, we can see that God can take nothing and make something out of it. Come on now. God can take something that looks like nothing. Who would have even thought of? recycling feces and selling it on the market for such a high price. Because God can take nothing and make something great out of it. If we continue and continue to look at this, there's a lot of things in nature that reflect the very same thing. Uh, if we go to the next, yeah, there's your, there, if you want the real one, Exotica, that's the real deal. You go ahead and buy you some. Just remember where it came from. <laughs> as you enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> and so, coffee Lua coffee, as you see even on the next screen, we see these beans and we see this coffee that came from something but was recycled to be used to be a blessing to somebody. And this is why I say here, you see it here on this screen, on the next screen is trash. God will take trash and make treasure out of it. Come on. Now, I don't know what you've been told in all your life. I don't know who they told you. They may have called you a thot, a thug. They may have called you ghetto and ratchet. They may have said you were nothing. You came from the wrong side of the track. They may have said that you a slow learner or you got ADHD, OCD, LMNOP. I don't care what they said that you have, but God can take whatever your issues are. Clean it up and make something out of it. You know what's wonderful? You know why we laughing at the coffee that the rich enjoy? You know what's wonderful? That, that feces is actually a fertilizer. When it seems like life is dumping things on you, when it seems like nothing is coming right, God has a way of taking the very same feces and filtering it through the, the, the roots of a plant, and if that is what makes it grow strong, it changes some way, somehow. Lord, I'm, I'm talking to somebody. I know I'm disgusting some of you, but uh, let's get bad feces there. Uh, and so God will take your trash and make it the treasure. Look at this scripture on the screen. I'm reading it from the NIV. It's Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah chapter 61 says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me. For the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. In verse 2 it says, He has sent me to tell those who mourn he has sent me to tell those who are mourning whatever state they are in their lives, whatever challenges they have, those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come. That's enough to shout right there. Oh man, I'm getting excited just reading this scripture. 
I don't know if I can make it too much further. He has, I've got to start over again. He has sent me to tell those who mourn, those who may be down, those who may be depressed, those who may feel like their life is just a big pile of poop. Those who mourn at the time of God's favor has come. And with it, the day of God's anger against their enemies. Ah. Woo -wee. That's why I that's why I don't hold on to anger and resentment and be upset. Because you know that's what kills you. You know the number one leading cause of cancer is stress. Come on. Oh, I hope you know that. Yeah, and so I don't hold on. I can forgive you because when I forgive you, I say, yeah, what you did to me was wrong. What you did to me don't feel good. I don't even feel like forgiving you. But instead of me getting you back, I'm going to let God deal with you. Because God says vengeance is mine. When you take when you take charge of your own vengeance and say, I'm going to get them folks Come back, on. and I'm going to get them, I'm going to show them, you have taken God's place. Come on. That's like trying to be the police when, and, and, and do your own citizens arrest and do what they call them vigilantes. You end up going to jail. Come on. When you choose not to forgive, you find yourself in a place where not, it, forgiveness is not to help the person who did you wrong, it's to help you to be That's free. Right. That's it. So, I'm sorry, let me just, just start that sentence. That's why I got a problem with these Hebrew Christians and Hebrew Israelites. Lord, have a, in Jesus' name, ain't Jesus, that's Zeus. And Jesus, there wasn't no English, there wasn't no J. What you talking about then? There wasn't no K either. So, when I kick you, what does that mean? His name was Yahweh, 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 That's you. Bless you. Somebody know what I'm talking about. They all mad. I mean, Hebrew Israelites say, all white people are sons of Esau because their skin turned red, you see. And they damn, they'll never be free. They'll always go to hell. Only the black man, not the black man in Africa, only the black man in America. That's what they say. Wow. Everybody else going to hell. It's, it comes, rises out of anger, bitterness, yeah. resentment. So you have these new... Uh, emerging religions that are coming out of people who are angry. But I came to tell you, God sent me to tell you more that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, help me get through this. Now look at verse 3. To all who mourn in Israel, I'm talking to you, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes. Now, if you don't understand for ashes, then what about if I say for ashiness? Did that help him make it a little bit better? He will anoint you for your ashiness. When you all looking bad, when you all crumpled up, your ashes mean depravity. It means with nothing. It means everything is gone. I'm going to give you a crown of beauty. I'm going to make you the beauty queen over everything. I'm going to give you the crown. You know, a crown means winner. A crown means the one who gets the prize. The crown is the one who crossed the line. I will give you a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning. When I look at my boys there, there's a two of eight boys, two of 11 children. And uh, y'all know me. Don't, don't come tell me I have too many children because you didn't buy one night. Come on. Doctor. You didn't stay up not one night with my ears. But when I look at my children, I declared I will not mourn over their lives. Yeah. Lord have mercy. I will not mourn. I will not be sorrowful. I will not be shamed. As a matter of fact, they, their children, their children's children, their children's children's children, their children's 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 children must be blessed in Jesus' name. I say to you, have real vision in 28. Stop just looking at God. Talk about, I need nice clothes. I need a nice car. Father, I want you to bless the generations that come all the way down to the children's, 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 children that I'll never meet. That's it. Yeah. We're too short-sighted. Yeah. Well, I, I, I ain't about you. I live in a shack so my children's children will live in a mansion. Lord have mercy. Who am I talking to right now? I will sacrifice because that, that there's a joyous blessing that shall come instead of mourning. My children will not be a statistic. All my children will be married. I'm going to present my daughter on her wedding day, a virgin, to her virgin husband. 
work a whole wedding ceremony. That's when the father steps there. He ain't just there. He there said, I'm presenting this. That's my hope. Lord. Oh, yeah. That's just unrealistic. Everybody doing it. Everybody ain't doing it. Everybody ain't. My daughter will not be Cardi B. She'll be a virtuous woman. Well, she ain't going to swing on no pole. In the name of Jesus. I'm talking to somebody right now. I will not allow no further. I will not. The devil will not break you down to the point where my expectations will become low. I have high expectations for my life, my children's life, their children's life, their children's life. For up to come, Lord have mercy. Instead of mourning festive praise, instead of despair, woo, huh, you got joy instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. Oh, y'all. I told you I'm optimistic about this year because I refuse, I refuse to let the devil steal what God has for me. Huh. When you look at this, I'm going to show you a few other things in nature that show that God will take trash to treasure. When you look at this, everybody likes honey, you know, most of us. Anybody like honey? Yeah. You like honey? Yeah. Because honey is bee vomit. <laughs> Basically, honey is bee vomit. The bee goes to the... The bee goes to the flower, sucks up the nectar. It goes down to one of his stomachs. They got two stomachs. Goes down to one of his stomachs, then he vomits it up and eats it. So when we get honey, it's bee vomit. It's sweet though, isn't it? <laughs> God can take vomit and bless people with it. Lord have mercy. Anybody like mushrooms? Mushroom is just a fungus. It's healthy, it's full of riboflavin and vitamin B, but mushroom is a fungus. Or actually I say fungi, it's Latin, right? Fungus is plural. Mushrooms are fungi. You're eating a fungus. Toe jam is on the fungus list. Don't eat that. <laughs> you know, it's interesting that God, when God when, when John the Baptist baptized Jesus, it says the Holy Spirit came upon him as a, as a dove. You see the dove there. It's interesting that God chose a dove. Because actually they say that a dove and a pigeon, a dove, the difference between a dove and a pigeon is that the dove has a better PR agent. In other words, we see pigeons as rats with wings. A dove is no different. A dove is just a low bird that nothing, but God chose to use the symbol of a dove. Nothing but anointed Jesus was the power of the Holy Spirit. By the way, for those people like uh, Pastor Gino and all these other folks that say there is no trinity, uh, Jesus was in the water, the Holy Spirit came down as a dove, and then God the Father spoke and said, this is my son. Anyway, that's a whole other thing for another day. Yeah. <laughs> you you got to watch when you make YouTube your teacher. Come on. Y'all, y'all, y'all making YouTube, y'all teaching. Look, Pastor Chino said, that one is a lie. You know, YouTube become your teacher, you go mad. Come on. You get all kinds of stuff. And I was talking to a brother the other day. How you know that, YouTube? How you know what YouTube said is true? It was on YouTube, can not be true? <laughs> God uses honey. God uses mushrooms. God uses a dove. Why can he not use you? Why can he not use you? How all of a sudden you got this low self-image? I'm not here to build your self-esteem. Because to build your self-esteem is for you to love yourself more. I don't need you to love yourself more. If you just love yourself more, everything's going to be okay. The devil is a lie. The devil loved himself so much he got kicked out of heaven. I'm here so that you love God more and you see yourself as God sees you. When your self-image rises and you see yourself as God sees you, then you say, you know what? There's nothing impossible when the Lord is inside of me. Ooh see, the funny thing is if you go to loving yourself, you're going to end up seeing, like Paul said in, in, in Romans chapter 7, there's no good thing within me. Because you're not good enough. Because no matter, isn't it true? Once you hit that, what they say is beautiful, they change the bar. Oh, I know I'm telling the truth. 
Long hair in, then a short, and the short hair is in. You get the short hair, that's supposed to be long. You, you, you first light skin in, then dark skin is in. That is all kind of, they're going to change the bar. First, it's good to have some curves, then you got to be skinny as a rail. If you're not a size one, you ugly. And I'm going to tell you, I'm looking at y'all. Y'all from the same tribe as me. Okay? You will never be a size one or a two. Your bone's too big to be that. <laughs> Your, just your bones alone, you too big to be a two. <laughs> so you go ahead and try to look like that model all you want. You can starve the rest of the year. You will never look like her. <laughs> Man, I lost all this weight. I'm still an eight, you know? <laughs> I thought you knew. And brother, at, at some point, your six pack can't define you. Have mercy. I had a six pack when I met my wife. I now got a keg, but it's okay. It's all right. It's all right. She still loves me with my keg. Even small things God uses. Isn't it interesting? You see this. This what you see on this side is a mustard seed. Jesus said, he didn't say if you have faith like a mustard seed. That's too big. He said, have faith like the grain of a mustard seed. You know the grain? Wait a minute, you see how small that is? The grain of a mustard seed is microscopic. See, God doesn't expect you to be big and great. Oh, Lord, I'm glad he doesn't expect you to be big and great, or I wouldn't be standing here. I'm not worthy to be here. He doesn't expect you to be big and great. He just expects you to allow big and great things to be done through you. Oh. We're not called to be, see, I'm, I'm working, I'm working right now, I'm fighting demons right now, I'm not here to impress anybody, I'm just fighting the demons that seek to block us. We're not called to be successful. See, many of us are pressured to be successful Christians. You gotta be successful, you got this pressure, so we're trying to act safe, trying to look safe, trying to do all these things. We're called not to be successful, we're called to be faithful. It's a big difference. And when you're faithful, the success comes. Lord have mercy. It's a big difference. It's going to cause me successful. I can look the part of you, boy. I got to have the right shoes when they be impressed. You know, I got to talk with big words and pontificate with my, uh, with my commodious vernacular to impress the saints. So they can know that I'm educated. And I can show that I'm somebody. No, 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 no. We're called to be faithful. Come on. See, when you're faithful, loving little snotty-nosed kids that's on foster care. Faithful, when you're loving old people who might be in hospice. And ain't nobody, you can't be on Facebook all the time, look at Facebook, look how with this mama, she's about to die. No, when you're faithful serving, when nobody else sees you. Come on, that's it. Success come. Yeah. Oh, Lord, have mercy. So, he says, if you have the faith of a grain of a mustard seed, what he's saying is, I don't need a lot, I just need a little bit to work with. Will you give me something to work with? I you came from. I know if you went to a better school and had a better life and had better parents and had more money, you can do great things. But can you let me do great things with the little that you have to give? How dare you be so arrogant and tell God I'm not enough for you. Go find someone else. After I make millions, then I'm going to be a blessing to the church. After I make this, then we always, is always something. You know, those, the church, you know, the church should be doing this. The church should be doing that. The esoteric church. Who is the church? This beautiful church, phenomenal church, one of the most sought after pastors in all the nation and all the world. He's over in Ghana. I'm telling you, they're trying to keep him there, I'm sure. <laughs> That's Christian state. Like, no, you know, I go, no, I'm going to get back. <laughs> I'm going to get back. <laughs> Don't tell him I did. <laughs> but if you look at the, look at this picture, the next picture, if you look at this picture, that small seed makes big plants. Mm. That small seed blesses a lot of people. What I'm saying is, what you have, maybe you don't have all the degrees. Mm. You know it's a shame now in being a parent? You got many people who don't want to, I don't want to be a parent, a father, a mother. I didn't know, I, I want a career, a mother, I'm not just a, just a mother. You can trust me, a mother. You can trust me, a father. No, I gotta carry a suitcase. Have a laptop. 
go down there and they fire you on the ass. But be a parent. <laughs> it's a big deal. Yes, it is. Amen. Because that's how you pass to the next generation. Come on. To be a current parent is a big deal. Let them call you grandma. You know, I, you, I know you think you too young. You want to be called G or GG or G mama. <laughs> by the way, what the hell? I'm just your dude. Just your dude. I'm too old to be your grandfather. Obviously, you're not too old to be a grandfather because you got a grandchild. <laughs> Who said you too young? Not too old, too young. Who said you too young to be a grandparent? You got a grandchild, you're not too young. Amen. When I started reminiscing back at the old people when I was young, I started to see that some of them were younger than I am now. Like when I was 8, 9, 10, and I started looking up, and they were like 42, 43. But well, somehow we abdicate because that's too small to be a parent to pour into my child. I can do something where everybody applauds me. One day that child will grow up. Huh. Everybody in prison had a mama and a daddy. Lord have mercy. Daddy may not have been around, but they had a mama and a daddy. Don't tell me the kids ain't got no daddy. They got a daddy, they may just not know where he at. My Lord. And yeah, there's baby mama drama. But in spite of your baby mama, you better take care of your child. Take care of your child ain't friend of the court opponent. Come on. Take care of your child is taking and embracing, planting into, pouring into, and the little nuggets that you pour into, they'll never get away from. Right. And so he says, a great one, I said, even when you look, you look at this, look at this picture here. I'm getting something. I'm going somewhere. We're going to pray in a minute. <laughs> Jesus comes to earth. Jesus comes to earth. Why didn't Jesus, Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, how did he be born in a barn? Mm. Let's get that. Christmas just passed. Mm -hmm. I celebrate Christmas. I know it's good. I know all that pagan stuff. Yeah, whatever. Folks talking about pagan Christmas ain't even celebrating Jesus. Mm -hmm. Come on. So you celebrate Jesus right now. Talk to me about Christmas. Come on. So anyway, that's a whole nother thing. That, 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 that whole nother thing for a whole nother day. Come on. Have you ever been in a barn? Mm -hmm. Anybody ever been in a barn? Yeah. What's the first thing that hits you? She said, God said smell. Mother up here said, the stank. <laughs> yeah. I like that. That's keeping it real. The stank. You can smell the barns way before you get up in the barn. The stank. Feces, body odor of animals, animal breath. Because you see the smoke coming out of the hole. <laughs> Just think you had a cow and a horse as a heater. A pig as a heater. And how did Jesus choose, how did God choose to be brought, introduced to earth in a stinking cave? Some say it's a cave, but wherever it was, is in a stinking place. Which I believe God was showing us it doesn't matter where you were born. Come on. Wow. Wow. Oh, I lived in a shotgun house. Oh, I grew up born in a shack. Oh, it was us. I had to share beds with five people. No matter where you came from, what matters is where you're going. That's it. When you recognize your assignment. That's it. I'll never be an exchange pedigrees with some of y'all. Some of y'all was suffering as something for me would be uh, living high. I'd be like George and Wheezy, where you at? You Interesting thing is that the shepherds came. A couple of years later, the wise men came and found this young boy. They worshiped a little boy because they saw God can take trash and make it treasure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Even when Jesus was crucified on Golgotha, what people missed is that it was right at the garbage dump. Oh, God. He wasn't crucified in some place. You know, you see the movie, he's on the hill somewhere. He was right at the garbage dump where all the trash was, which means there was flies everywhere. And where there's flies, there's maggots and rats and stank. And he hung there. And they said, if you think you somebody, take yourself down. But he knew, if I get crucified in the trash, I can change my people to treasure. Come on. Lord have mercy. Wow. God will take your trash, the treasure. When you look at this next slide, the Holy Spirit, when you see this, 
Uh, I, I'm, I'm arguing my case, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, as we begin this prayer revival, because some of us won't even come back tonight if we don't feel like we're worthy of what God want to do in our lives. But I want you to go so on fire saying, no, I'm coming and nothing's going to keep me back. And I don't care. But you know how easy it is for folks to get knocked out in church because somebody looked at them funny. They looked at me funny. How you know I didn't have indigestion? And I was just, you know, I'm just dealing with something. I just happened to look your way. How you know? I'm tired of hypocrites at church. They always looking at me because I ain't dressed good enough. Nobody told you you wasn't dressed good enough. That's in your own. Because you thought you didn't have enough. You was worried about what people were looking because you thought you wasn't good enough. And so then I get knocked out of what God wants to do in my life. Man, folks talk about hypocrites more than they talk about the real ones. You show me ten hypocrites, I'll show you a hundred saints. Uh, you know that. See? I've been on YouTube too much. No, all oh, church, fake church, fake church, fake church. If there's a fake, that means there's a real. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, breaks us free from bondage. You know pearls? You know pearls? You know what's interesting about pearls? I looked this up and it just blessed me to no end. Interesting thing about pearls is that, uh, let's see here. Natural pearls are actually an irritant inside of a muscle, a clam, or an oyster. It is to protect from an irritant. In other words, pearls come from an irritation. Mm. Oh, God. Wow. Wow. I wish y'all could be with me for a minute. Pearls come from irritation. If there were no irritation, there would be no pearl. Ah. Ooh. Irritate me, Lord. Irritate me. Let me be irritated. A grain of sand comes inside the oyster, the clam, or the mussel. And because it's irritating the inside of that, that what, what do you call it, mollusk? I don't know what you call it, that thing. There's a fluid that is secreted that coats the irritation to make it uh, less irritable. And it keeps secreting it until after a while it, that fluid gets hard and it becomes a pearl. Wow. Inside of every pearl is a grain of sand that irritated something. I know you've been irritated. I know, I know if you've been watching television preachers for too long, you start to believe that God's supposed to make everything okay this year. I'll have a breakthrough and everything's going to be smooth and all my problems are going to be gone. But I'm here to tell you, you're going to have some problems this year. You're going to have some challenges. You're going to have some pain. You're going to have some challenges. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Don't be prophesying that in my life. I'm telling you the real deal. Yes, sir. You're going to have some challenges, but out of those challenges, something great is going to come. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, diamonds are a girl's best friend, they say. I still traumatized when I was first getting married of the people who judged my commitment to my wife by the size of the diamond that I bought. Since I didn't have a whole lot, that diamond does not reflect a whole lot of what y'all would say was commitment. I later tried to change the diamond, and my wife said, you ain't changing nothing. This is what you bought me. I'm going to keep it till we die. I'm so glad in my wife. When I finally got some money, I said, I'm going to buy you a big one so we may see. She said, as long as I see. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, they bought the diamond. Because I have folks with bigger diamonds that got divorced much faster. Come on. Ooh, let me see the rock. Let me see the rock. You're about to see the divorce papers right after you see. No, never mind. Anyway. But let's talk about diamonds for a minute. I ain't, I'm not against diamonds. A diamond ain't nothing but charcoal. It's the same composition as charcoal. Anybody, if you, you buy coal in a big bag, pour it into a, 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 a pit and light it on fire and cook meat. Yes, sir. Nobody fighting you for that coal. Nobody coming, nobody jumping in your backyard stealing pieces of charcoal. Yes, the coal does not become valuable until it has had a, a time under heat and extreme pressure. Mm. Coal becomes a diamond under time, a long time, under heat, intense heat, and pressure. And it's the heat and the pressure that makes diamonds. Wow. 
Yes, sir. If you pray to God, take away the pressure, uh. you're gonna be you're gonna stay where you are. Because see, the chemical composition, I'm not a chemist, but the chemical composition of charcoal and the diamond is the exact same. Mm. It is what happened to the diamond yes, sir. that caused it to become more valuable. Uh-huh. Thank God for the pressure. Thank you. Father, just give me some patience. Yeah. Now, patience, patience is not just, oh, the Lord is Lord. Patience is the ability to stand. Yeah. Give me the ability to stand. Yes, sir. You don't get no, now, I'm in Saginaw, the, the, the city of champions. Come on. There's more great basketball, football players per capita that come out of Saginaw than anywhere in the world, I think. Come on. Am I right about that? No, come on, you're right. It's like y'all scrubs are better than most people's stars. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right? If you just make the team and second, are you better than somebody from wherever? I'm not going to name any place. I mean, if you're from Cleveland, you have a parade in, in below zero weather to celebrate that you're going 16. Yeah. <laughs> that says a lot about people from Cleveland. <laughs> they had a parade to celebrate going 16. Mm. You're from Saginaw. Nobody becomes a great basketball player because they were just born good. Come on. Am I right? Right. Y'all know basketball better than me. I play basketball, even in my best days, I play basketball, I foul out before that first half. <laughs> I'm a football player. So I play basketball, it's like, what? What's wrong? You ain't bleeding, that ain't no foul. <laughs> you know why you call it foul? You ain't bleeding. That's, that's why they banned me in the locker room, send me outside to play football. Nobody becomes a great basketball player because they were born that. Now, I know some of our boys believe because they're black, they're better than other folks. Uh. Being black don't make you a good basketball player. Come on. Lord have mercy. You're not just born and, and you, know, you got a baby boy. Oh, oh, you crossing over. You're not just born shooting threes. Ah. You're not born that way. You become good because you got to go through something. That's it. You gotta run some suicides. You gotta do some drills. You gotta lift some weights. You gotta you gotta practice, practice, practice. You gotta eat, sleep. That's why even after basketball season, there's a basketball season. Yeah. That's it. AAU, little league, all kinds of stuff. The performing, you gotta go through some pressure. You got coaches cussing you out, going off on them. Mm -hmm. I know I'm telling the truth. Yes, sir. Hey, cuss you out, go off on you, you don't leave. You never go anywhere. You stay there. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Sit down. Put you on the bench. Humiliate you in front of all other folks. Drive you crazy. Why? Because that pressure is what makes you a better player. That's it. So if that applies in sports, how much more does that apply in our lives? Mm. Okay, go through something. Life wasn't supposed to be easy. Yeah. God never said, come unto me, oh yeah, <laughs> and I'm going to make life just smooth. Man, you're just going to get paid. Everything's going to be good. I got to move. I got to move. I got to move. And so that's that. And so change is ahead. Yeah. Let's look at this. Look at this. God will take you from trash to treasure. If you go to the next thing, somebody say trash. 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 To treasure. To treasure. Okay, let me give you one more example. Next slide. Anybody like classical music? You like classical music? That's cool. They say that things are intelligent. They don't know about that. Give me some John B. Key and I feel intelligent. <laughs> but anyway, so if you like classical music, that's, you don't see the words there. I, I should have write the words in a different uh, color. That's Beethoven, Ludwig Beethoven. Uh -huh. One of the great composers of all time. Yes. He died in 1897. What many people don't know is that right about 1798, Beethoven had lost 60% of his hearing. Mm -hmm. By 1798, he lost this. Now, he still had almost 30 years to live, and 60% of his hearing was gone. And by 18, uh, let me make sure I'm right here. By 1820, he had lost all his hearing. He was totally deaf. Couldn't hear a thing. But even though he was totally deaf, huh, he created his greatest compositions that are celebrated now while he was deaf. Greater than the ones when he could hear. I want you to hear me again. Now, now those of you like, now those of you like it, you know. They, these, these include the last five piano sonatas, the Misa Solomonis, I hope I said that right, the Ninth Sympathy, not Sympathy, Symphony. <laughs> that was funny. Ninth Symphony, 
With his choral finale and the last five string uh, quartets, he did all of those while he was totally and completely deaf. And they are seen as masterpieces. Mm. What does that say to me? No matter what handicap it may seem like you have, stop letting folks call you disabled. Come on. I'm so tired of hearing folks, you know I'm disabled. <laughs> you know I'm disabled. <laughs> you know I'm disabled. And my son is disabled too. And, and all my kids disabled. They even give you a check for saying they're disabled. Stop calling, I ain't disabled. I'm able. Somebody say, I'm able. I'm able. Not this year, I'm not disabled. I'm go ahead and keep your check, but I'm able. I'm able. Everybody want to get to tell you, you got a disability. I can't pay attention. I got disability. So since I can't pay attention, I can't do nothing. I can't, I clean too much. I do this. I, I, I OCD. I'm disabled. I can't do nothing. You know, my OCD, my OCD kicking in, you know. The devil will trick you out of your destiny because you begin to embrace something that never was meant to define you. It was actually meant to sharpen you. So if I go completely deaf, I will still compose masterpieces. If I can't pay attention, that means I'm going to wake up earlier. And I can play around on the internet, play around a little more. When I finally get it done, I get it done. Lord have mercy. I ain't disabled. Love when, love, Beethoven was disabled when he made it happen. Let me give you one more example about, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Actually, let's look at this scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26 to 29. Remember, dear brothers, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, I'm talking to you brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes, or powerful, or wealthy when God called you. Few of you were anything when God called you. This is what the scripture is saying. Instead, God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. Ooh-wee. Uh, let, me, let me not elaborate. I'm trying to close here. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. Okay, it says important, but I just kicked in my little e box. Verse 29, as a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. Have you ever considered my brothers and sisters? They said that I was, they said that I was slow. They said that I was hyper. I don't know where they got that from. <laughs> they said I couldn't learn. God loves taking the, notice it says, he takes the foolish things to shame those that are wise. Maybe you don't talk as articulate as other people. Maybe you don't have it like they have. But you better recognize God picked me because he wanted to show how powerful he is. Yeah. So don't write yourself off. You got to write yourself in. I'm talking about 2018. Yes, sir. Then he said, he chose the powerless to shame the powerful. I don't have wealth in my background. I have family. I got dysfunction in my family. And God will take you out of that dysfunctional family to bring functionality to the entire world. Yes, sir. Have you considered, my brothers and sisters, that the trash that you thought you were, that God wanted to shame the world and show that what you thought was trash is treasure? Despise the world, the people that were counted as nothing. Anybody ever here been counted as nothing? But let me tell you something. Nobody can make you feel like nothing unless you give them permission. That's it. They may see you as nothing, but you need to recognize. Say, so hold up. Maybe I am nothing, but you need to know who's inside of me. Because, oh, Lord, in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 says, You have overcome little children because, remember, you have overcome little children because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I ain't mad. I feel sorry. I was. I live in Mississippi, Memphis, Memphis uh, metro area. Yesterday they had the Confederate march, just like Charlottesville. It was mad because they removed the Confederate, whatever. And what you think? What you do if you gonna see a Confederate flag? I'm saying, huh? Oh, they still celebrating them folks who lost. <laughs> They're going to make me feel bad about myself. Let me make you a real loser. I mean, they lost the Civil War when? 1863? 
1863, you lose the war and you still celebrating it, and you must be a real loser. I ain't gonna get my blood pressure up. <laughs> I've had bigger problems to deal with. That's it. I feel sorry for you. You need to come over to the winning side. Yeah. <laughs> God chose those things, and the, and the world considers important as a result. Nobody can boast. God is doing great things. I'm telling you this right now. God is doing things in my life bigger than I ever could have imagined. Come on. God is doing things that, man, if I told you have. But see, you know what's so wonderful about it? I know I'm not able, I'm not smart enough, I'm not capable, but in spite of all of my insufficiencies and weaknesses, God is doing it. I sit, man, I sit with millionaires and they admire me. Huh. I hope you hear what I'm saying. I walk in the room looking, well, you got millions, I ain't got nothing. I got everything. My daddy owns everything. That's it. I walk in the room, they go, oh, Matthews, yeah, uh-huh, here I am. I'm not boasting because it said, as a, result, as a result, no one can boast in the presence of God. When you know that the presence of God is on your Come life, on. Yes, no matter what happens in this year, no matter how bad it looks, you got to say, no, I'm on the winning side. That's it. I'm bringing glory to God. Because yeah. this, this, this black Nappy-headed people. People ask me, so will you, you a football player? No, I'm a, no, 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 no. Don't define me just with sports. I'm an intellectual. In spite of what y'all say. I'm powerful. Sit in the boardroom, go wherever else. You should walk in your job. Not just, well, I don't have the degrees like they have. I don't have what they have. I don't wear what they wear. I don't have the wigs like they got the nice Brazilian wig, you know, with the natural human yakky hair. I don't have that. I can't afford that. You're going to count yourself smaller, smaller, smaller. The devil is a lie. I'm small, but the one that's in me is big. Come on. That's Let's go back to sports just for a minute. It is something to be at the park and somebody pick you for their team. Mm. Who, me? You want? Oh, okay. I'm good. Mm. We got next. Speaking of sports, I told you I don't live in this church over football. Y'all ever heard of rugby? <laughs> That's the original football, you know. Yeah. Rugby. They still play it in Africa and Europe. Only rich people play it here. Interesting thing, story about rugby. The guy who invented rugby did it by accident. His name was William Webb Ellis in 1823. William Webb Ellis lived in a city called Rugby. My boys play soccer really well. They're really good. They lived in a city called Rugby, and they had soccer. The name of the city was Rugby, okay? They had a soccer championship from city to city, which is a big deal. The whole town came. One city was playing the other. William Webb Ellis, Ellis was on the soccer team, which is called football everywhere else but here. And he's playing soccer, and their, their city is a big deal, and their city is losing, and he's playing, and they, now they get ahead, but instead of kicking the ball, you know you can't touch the ball. Instead of kicking the ball, he picks the ball up and runs with the soccer ball. The town loses the game. People talk about him. They even publish it in the newspaper. William Webb Ellis is a joke. He's all messed up. He's this, that, the other. William Webb Ellis even was uh, tempted to commit suicide because it was that bad. Because uh, if you know, they, they will kill you over soccer, by the way. You think you sports fanatics, you, you ain't seen nothing. You get over Africa, Europe, other places over soccer, they will kill you. He picked the soccer ball up and ran with it. And then what happened was that he was so depressed. He was so, he was out, he was pushed away by everybody, including his family, didn't want to have anything to deal with him. And then somehow he came to Jesus. He went to church and got saved. And God changed his perspective. This is a true story. God changed his perspective. He began to see things different, and he began to embrace his biggest failure. And he created a game called rugby where you carry the ball across the goal line. Mm. Wow. This failure, William Webb Ellis created rugby. By the way, that rugby team is the South African rugby team. They're one of the best in the world. I just thought I'd show you that. And, this, and they created a ball, a different kind of ball, and today... The top team in rugby who wins the Rugby World Cup is called the William Webb Ellis Trophy. He embraced his greatest failure, and it became his greatest triumph. You begin to think, is it over? I done messed up. It's too bad. Maybe I should just kill myself. Well, you know, suicide is actually Satan trying to get you to do what God won't allow him to do. Come on. 
When you commit suicide, God won't let him kill you. And so the devil tempts you and says, do this because I can't do it. God won't let me. But you, can, you have free will. And so as we go, my brothers and sisters, as we push forward, as we see this, uh, William Webb Ellis and all the other things that we're looking at, trash, God will take you from trash to treasure. The ultimate insult is to spit on somebody. I don't have time because I want to pray now. There's a young girl that, a young black girl in the South, back in the day that everybody spit on her seat. And then the teacher made her spit, sit in that seat on her first day of school. Jesus is the ultimate insult in the Middle East to spit on somebody. But Jesus took spit, put it into dirt, and put it in a man's eye. He took the nastiest thing he could think of and did one of the great miracles of all time. And even as you go forward again, let's go, let's go. Even as we go forward, let's go, Brother TV. <laughs> Next one. Then even as we go, maybe you've been cursed out, insulted. Maybe you've been called a loser. By the way, cursing is exactly that. That's why saints don't cuss. We say cussing, but cursing is really, it's spiritual warfare, is to speak a curse upon somebody's life. Mm. It's interesting. My boys will tell you, people cuss the same way everywhere in the world. Mm. No matter what language, they say it the same. Yeah. People in the South, the North, because it's a curse, demonic curse being spoken upon your life. That's why somebody says, I'm going to get you out, I'll cuss you out. And how does that hit you so hard? Because they're speaking a curse upon you. <laughs> Those words, it's just words, it's just words. All witchcraft incantations are based upon words. So when you call me a boop, 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 how do you think somebody feels so bad? Because they've been cursed. They've been insulted. They've been told that they're nothing. But God can take you from a cursing to healing. He can take you from being a loser to being victorious. Because he'll take you trash to treasure. That story is clear with Jacob. I got the, the, these people up here in, 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 in Afrikaans uh, as I was using this at my church. They, they, you see, Jacob, Jacob was a con man, but God used him. Moses murdered somebody, but God used him. Esther was an orphan, but God used her. Ruth was uh, from a pagan place. Nothing against you, mama. Ruth was from a pagan place and, and, and was left out by herself, but God used her. David, David was the biggest uh, creeper of all time, you see the picture, right? Mm -hmm. Creeper of all time, but God used him. Paul, uh, Peter was a big mouth, talked too much, but God used him. Mary Magdalene, it is said that she was a prostitute, but also she had many demons inside of her, but God used her. Uh, Zacchaeus was robbing, he was the most corrupt politician of all time, taking everybody's money, but God used him. And Paul hated Christians that were killing him, and God used him. What about you? What's the worst about you? He can turn your trash to treasure. Can you all stand with me? Stand with me even right now. Listen, I, I know God has us here for a purpose. You're here for a reason. Maybe you're visiting. I don't know. Maybe you're here. But I know God called us here for a reason because this is a day of healing and strength and propagation, not just motivation. Uh, because motivation is like perspiration, it dries up. Mm. This is a day of impartation. Yes, sir. It's more like if you get motivated, you know, you hear some motivation speaking, you go, yeah. And then you leave and you're like, uh, I have to dry up. God is saying, even right now, mm. <laughs> I didn't call you because you were worthy, I didn't call you because you were good enough. None of us are good enough. Who told you? Who, who told you? The greatest of all of us. Nobody's good enough. I called you because I'm good enough. Yeah. And I'm Jehovah El Shaddai, God who is more than enough. Every insufficiency for every flaw, for every weakness, when you are weak, I will make you strong. Yeah. Now, to go from trash to treasure begins with accepting Christ in salvation. Mm. You, can't, you can't leave here excited if you're not saved. If you're not born again. And what it means to be born again, it means to say, I give up control over my life and I give it over to you, God. Yes. I'm not even telling you a bunch of rules and a list of things. The biggest rule is to say, accept Christ and say, you take control of my life. Because after that, mm. 
Yeah, you can do whatever you want when you say. Can I help you? You do whatever you want when you say. Interesting thing is, when you free it on a real winning team, there's some things you just don't want to do anymore. That's it. I always got to talk to somebody. Say, don't do this, don't do that. When you really say it, there's things you just want to do. When I got saved, when I got saved, I had a case of beer in my house and a girlfriend and a fiance. And another girl I was checking out. Oh, that's just the real deal. That was her, her, and then the one. And then, yeah, and I was going to go home and drink my beer. Oh, excuse me, it wasn't home. It was in my car. Nobody said you got saved and now uh, don't go drink that beer. They didn't even know I had beer. But something inside of me began to change. Why I didn't need alcohol yes, to feel, Lord have mercy. Yes, then I began to recognize I was medicating something because I had an insufficiency in my mind of who I really was. When I got real power, uh -huh. I'm, telling you, I'm telling you, I went to my fiance and told her, I got a girlfriend over there, I got another girl over there, but I want you now, and I'm gonna go, and I'm about to go, you wanna go with me, I'm gonna go tell that girl I ain't bothered with her no more. Then she said, I ain't going with you over there, that's drama, you gonna come back. I went, told her, and it was hard, it was hard, brother, it was hard. <laughs> it was hard, and she said, please don't leave me, move, baby, please don't leave me, you, you couldn't do anything that day. And I said, uh-uh, uh-uh, because, I got a new life. And God is changing me from trash to treasure. And so now I'm a one woman man. For 23 years. Now you talking to an ex male thought. Okay? But God freed me from bondage. Oh God. Now this is a new year. Yeah. New slate. Now the interesting thing is God is not confined by time, space, and matter. God didn't say happy new year because he was already here when you got here. God was already in 2018 when you got here. He's like, hey, welcome. So he's like, happy new year. Five, four, three. God not confined by time. This new year, this is the opportunity. You came the first Sunday of the year. One of 52. God said, in the day that you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. I know I took some time. I could have took more, so don't call me long with it, because I could have took more. I know I took some time, but I'm, I'm appealing to you, and I'm fighting the demons that want to keep you uh, uh, at a level or to keep you at mediocre. You know, when you look at Daniel chapter 6, Daniel chapter 6, it said Daniel was put over all of the prophets and over everything because an excellent spirit was in him. Yes. Now this is a boy, this is a boy who had been taken from mama and dad, had been conditioned by the government of a foreign government, had been castrated, which means his testicles were cut off so that he could be impotent and powerless. He was emasculated, castrated, institutionalized, and under the highest form of racism of all time. And he rose to be over everything. Because, not because of who his mom and him was, not because of how much money he had. He was a slave. He was a eunuch. But because an excellent spirit was not, he didn't think excellently, was in him. Now I'm done, my brothers and sisters. I, 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 I rest my case. I rest the case for today, but I'm saying to you, I believe God is calling some of you. If God is speaking to you, if you're not saved, I'm speaking to two people. If you're not saved, today is your day to say, I want to make it right with you. Because, you know, there come, it is once appointed unto man to die. And after death is the judgment. And we cannot go before God righteous because we're not good enough. It's like being in court. I'm going to lose, but they want to settle my case. I'm not talking about plea bargain. They want to settle the case, and I can get riches or whatever else. Or if I go to court, I lose. And me personally, I settle out of court. When I go to court, I'm clear. If you go to court on your own righteousness, on the, well, my good outweigh my bad, you're going to lose. Well, what you think is right with it, you're going to lose. But God is saying, you can settle out of court. I already signed the deal for you. All you got to do is activate it. You're not saved. If you're not sure, if you're like, I'm not sure, well, I was saved, but then I'm, I don't know. Mama didn't make me come to church today. 
I think you might need to get it right today. And then I'm talking to Christians. You've been born again, but you've been living like a pagan when you're a child of a king. I don't take that as an insult, but I'm not, not some of like, oh, who are you talking to? You ain't like a pagan. My point is that you've been living saved, you've been doing right, but God is saying there's so much greater I want to do in your life. Yeah. Now, if I'm talking to anybody, saved or not saved, and you heard this word and God was speaking to you, I want you to quickly come and meet me at this altar. This is this is the beginning of prayer right? Come on, my brother. There's some others. Come on. Don't no, don't 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 mess up now and get religious and say, I can't go to altar because I'm a missionary. I'm a this, I'm a that. Come on, meet me. Come on, meet me. Come on, meet me. Come on. God is speaking to me. Young, old, mama, daddy, no matter, son, daughter, boo or not. Come on. There's some more God is speaking to. God is saying, I'm gonna flip this thing. I'm gonna flip the script. Trash will be treasure. In Jesus' name. There's some more that want to come, but I'm, I'm going to tell you what you're thinking right now. Yeah, I want to come, but I'm nervous, I'm scared, and I'm going to look funny. That's the devil. There's another thing you're thinking. Yeah, I want to come, but I'm just going to stand here and get it right. But there's something in your obedience to meet us here that God's going to do something. And I'm saying break free, because the devil want to hold you back. Because if you can't be free here, you won't be free anyway. Because ain't nobody going to talk about you, laugh at you for coming to the altar in the church. If you can't be free here, how are you going to be free at home? How are you going to be free when you get around your boys, around your girl? How are you going to be free when your boo call you and text you tonight? If you can't be free here, you can't be free nowhere. There's a few more. I want to pray. I want to hurry up and pray. But there's some, I'm begging you right now. I'm begging you. I'm begging you because the decision that you make right now is so important for your life. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. I can't rush. I'm begging you. It's the first year, first Sunday of this year. I'm begging you. Let's start this thing right. And forget those things which are behind. Forget what's behind you. Forget what you did. Forget where you've been. Forget what you said. Forget what they said to you. And press. Let me say, I'm pressing, I'm pressing, I'm pressing, I'm pressing, I'm pressing. Satan is a liar. I rebuke the enemy even right now. That's the queen. I rebuke the enemy even right now. And I speak even right now, freedom. I preach like I preach because I'm fighting and warring with the demons that are trying to take us out. And this decision that you make now will save your life. And I speak even right now in the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray even right now. Now there are some of us here who are already saved, but there are some of us that are standing here who are saying, I need to make it right with God. You know who you are. It's between you and God. On this first Sunday of 2018, I need to make it right with God. I need to make it right with the Lord. Now is that time. i got to make it right. I wonder if you will. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, Jesus died and he rose from the dead, you may not understand everything. Lord knows I'm still trying to understand. I think I'll be in heaven a million years, and I still won't understand. But I just need to understand. I don't understand the apps on my phone, but I use them. Ask me to tell you how they work. I have no idea. How does FaceTime work? That's state from George Jensen. How does that work? I don't know how it works, but I use it. But all of a sudden, with God, we got to understand. I don't understand. I just wait till I understand. Lord have mercy. I don't even understand how my car. I used to understand cars. Now open the hood, just be like, well, that's pretty. <laughs> I didn't know what a carburetor. I don't think they even have carburetors anymore. I don't even understand. I'm like, well, I don't understand this stuff, but I like it. There's so much I don't understand. But one thing I do know, <laughs> he works. I know he works. Boy, that app works. That app called Jesus, it works. I'm going to preach that one day. The app called Jesus, don't you preach that? After I preach it. Or if you preach it, don't put it on YouTube. So, the app called Jesus, it works. So, I say to you, my brothers and sisters, as you hear on this altar, and I'm speaking to you too who didn't come to the altar. God has grace because there's some who want to come. But you, just, yeah, nah. you haven't given your life to Christ, or if you're not sure, if you want to make it right, you want to make it solid. It's not about just joining the church. It's about saying, I want to make this right. I want you to just raise your hands before God even right now. We raise our hands because we said, I surrender. It's like the police. When they stop somebody, raise your hand. Don't reach for your weapons. That's what we said. I'm not reaching for the weapons of my attitude, my intellect, or my own thoughts. 
I surrender, I give it up to you. Just say, Lord Jesus, I've sinned. But I ask you, Lord, to forgive me of the sin in my life. Make my trash treasure. Save me, Lord. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose from the dead. And from this day forward, you take charge of my life. In Jesus' name. Say amen. Now, if you want to say, if you prayed that prayer, and you believe what you said, you are now saved. When I got saved, I didn't cry, shout, dance, or fall. Some folks said he ain't saved. But he don't even look like he's saved. But uh, there's something changed in my heart. Because I believe what I said. Lord, this is it. This is it. So you may not dance, shout, or fall, which is good. I do all of the above. I do it all sometimes. But one thing is, when it happened in your heart, it clicked in your heart. God is right now turning treasure. He's, he's, he's recycling your purpose. He's repurposing you right now. Now I want to pray with everybody because everybody didn't come here to be saved. You just came and said, Lord, renew and help me. Give me a new perspective. Give me to walk before you. You spoke to me today because I didn't say a word to y'all. Y'all heard me ask God to speak. I don't even know you good enough to be in your business. I don't know y'all. I know you, but I'll be saying you. Now, I speak even right now. Receive it even right now. I speak the blessings of God upon you. I speak divine favor upon your life. If you receive it, say amen. I speak open doors. See, every blessing, receive it, say amen. I speak open doors. I speak fulfillment. I speak that they will walk in their destiny. Oh, y'all getting it now. Every time you say amen, you said I agree and I receive it. I speak that their generations that they never even will see will be blessed. I speak even right now that their mourning will turn to joy. I speak even right now that you will confuse the powerful because you brought your power through them. And I speak in the name of Jesus that they will bring glory to your name. That their lives will be a testimony of the power of God. And you will give them strength in their life as they live. Now I'm going to pray for you, Father, in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray with me. Father, I speak even right now a new perspective. I rebuke the demonic spirit of depression. I rebuke the demonic spirit of oppression. I rebuke the demonic spirit of low self-image. I rebuke the spirit of thinking that I've been feeling like I'm not good enough. And I speak even right now that we will embrace and do the impossible. Because what is impossible to man is possible to you. And it is so. In the name of Jesus, show us your glory. Show us your grace. Father, it's 2018. For these that are standing here, they're saying enough is enough. And they expect more from you. We don't ask. We demand that you use us. We demand that you do great things in our lives. And it is so. In Jesus' name. If you believe that prayer, just say amen. Shaheed about Shahad. Listen, listen, before we go to our seats, man, some of y'all in this altar, I'm just hyped that you're here. I'm just hyped that you're here. Like in my spirit. Yeah. If you're not a part of this church, if you got saved, I don't ask do you want to join the church personally. I don't know what pastor do, but he told me I'm the pastor today, so. Wherever you're born, that's where your family is. Little baby at the hospital asked me, so where you gonna go? Where you gonna go, baby? You born that you go home with us. You don't leave here and go to New Mama right if there's a new mama right here, I just say. You don't go down the street somewhere, you stay where you were born, because this is where life will come. If you are if I live anywhere near this church, hundred mile radius, this will be my church. Because this is a life-giving, real deal place. Now, if you gave your life, renewed your life, uh, whatever, I'm saying to you, this is your home. You got mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers. You got a pastor who looks better than me, by the way. He's cooler than me, too. He dressed better than me. If you're not a part of this church, you gave your life to Christ today, before you went, I want to welcome you to the family. Somewhere where you will always belong. Somewhere where they won't look at you funny. Now, we ain't all perfect over here. That won't happen until we get to heaven. Don't come in like me. Yeah, but that sister Sookie, she like, yeah, sister Sookie, you here to help her. She 
here to help you. Where you at? If you're not a part of this church, come here right now. If you're not a part of this church already, I want to welcome you to the family. Anybody not a part of this church? Come on, sis. Anybody else not a part of this church already? All y'all, all y'all members at this church. All y'all members. Yeah, man. Come out here, somebody.